out to draw dynamic folds and wrinkles with Sean Atteny. Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is a little video where I'm going to take a look at an art course I've just finished at svslearn.com which is the Society of Visual Storytelling and the course we're going to be looking at is how to draw dynamic fold and wrinkles with the artist Sean Tenney. The next one's going to be basic pers perspective drawing, which I'm looking forward to that. But this one was a really fun little course, all about drawing dynamic fold and wrinkles. So before we get into talking about the course, I'm just going to show you a little short Shauna so you can see what she's like. Da, 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 da. Hi, welcome to the class How to Draw Dynamic Folds and Wrinkles here at SBS. I'm your teacher, Shauna J.C. Tenney. I'm a children's book author and an illustrator, and I'm so excited to teach this class. It's so important to know how to draw convincing folds and wrinkles when we're drawing characters, and so it's really important to start from the basics. In this class we're going to learn about the anatomy of folds, we're going to learn about the different types of folds, yes there's different types of folds, we're going to learn about rendering textures and thickness, we're going to talk about uh, drawing the human body through the clothing, and we're also just going to talk about how wrinkles change as the movement of the body changes. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. There's something really fun in here, because she talked about, this is it, when she was little, this is how she got into wrinkles and folds. When she was little, she used to enjoy colouring in these little to try and paper dolls, shade the wrinkles. which I thought was really cool. Understanding of how the wrinkles work. Yeah. So she's talking about, she's basically been, been into wrinkles and folds for, for ages. But I There's was also... This one here, look. If you look at day backwards, this is so one of the books. She ends up this is one of the books she's done, and if you look at the dress on the character, if I can get a good image of it, the dress is just full of insane wrinkles. You sort of saw it there. If I put it there. And oh boy, I had to draw that fluffy pink ball gown. So she's definitely got the skills. In fact, if I go onto her website, you can see you can see some of her drawings and stuff. She's a really good artist. I love her little artwork. It's fun. But what I'll do first is I'll go through the course just to show you what's in it. So we've got introduction, inspiration from the classics. That was really good. What you had to do there was you had to find a load of artwork from Masters and Modern Day and just study the folds. That was really fun actually. Then you move on to the anatomy of folds, which is overlapping edges and changes of planes, perspective and foreshortening, tension, compression and gravity, geometric shapes, and then you have little homework assignment. <laughs> oh. I, when, this morning when I woke up, I did my automatic writing and I said, I'm a little bit scared about today's video. And what it said was, it said, keep going. It said, the mind is going to lie to you. So just then, my voice cracked up and a negative thought went into my head of that I've got to restart this video, but I'm not going to. So the automatic writing has given me strength today because it told me to keep going. <laughs> the reason my voice is like this is because I've just woken up and I wanted to record it before I start the day. So the next chapter is types of folds. This was really, this is probably my funnest chapter. We had all the different types of folds. Then you went into the types of texture, which was really good as well. Then we move into indicating the form under clothing. Then you move into action and attitude. And then we have the final assignment. So that's basically what the course is all about. What I'm going to do, I've got some little tiny notes here. So the first thing I ask myself is, do I recommend this course? 
And the main thing is, yes, there's definitely some negatives with this course, but I really do recommend it because I've basically, I've really understood more than ever in my life, I've understood how folds work. I've actually realized there's rules to folds. So if you can learn the rules, it's like that thing they say, if you learn the rules, then you can start breaking it, start breaking them and start making them your own. So when I started this course, I was hoping it was gonna teach you folds and then it was gonna go into characters and how to draw these folds on characters. It never really got to that phase. This course is more about studying folds, understanding how they work so that you can start in your head working out how the folds behave so but it feels like this is one of the little negatives about the course it feels a bit like it needs another chapter at the end where it focuses on characters and what i would love is if say they had they took a, an image a realistic image with all these folds on it and then they basically had a little character and what they did was they simplified it they really simplified it multiple times in different styles to show you how you can take those folds and turn them into styles but I, I love this course I definitely recommend it because I've like I said I've learned how the folds work I've learned all the types of folds and the main thing is when I'm walking around outside now and even if I'm looking at images in art books or other people's artwork these folds they pop out at me it's a bit like when I first started learning about negative shapes this the shapes between things at first I I couldn't really see see it I didn't really even know what they were talking about one day I suddenly got it and it's like now when I look at things I just see the shapes between things they pop out and all it is is she's she puts your awareness on the shapes so that's the main thing I love about the course and the sort of things you'll be learning and drawing. So my, over, my overall pluses and minuses, I'll go over that at the end. What I thought I'd do to start with is just go through my study notes so you can see the sort of things you'll be learning and stuff. So the first thing is she is very happy and I love that. All through the course she's been very happy. So talking about the basics. And then these are the types she talks about certain artists that she recommends studying. And then the main exercise to start with was going off and collecting a bunch of classic and modern drawings to like study the folds. That was really fun. I, I learned a lot from that. So that was good. Then we moved on to the anatomy of folds. She was talking about overlapping edges, changes of planes, basic shapes. This is funny. Throughout the entire course, she kept talking about always start she she had this little like little motto where she said general to specific. So she kept because like Lee Hammond, one of my favourite artists, said, repetition is the key to learning. She kept repeating this phrase, general to specific. So by the end of it, you do remember general to Pacific. And she said, start out with the big shapes. But one of the ways I've, one of the ways I remember things is by making things funny. So I've turned it into a little catchphrase. So when I start my drawings now, I write down big bastard basic shapes. <laughs> the big bastard basic shapes. Because I think big bastard basic shapes, it's just a funny thing. So... It's just a little thing I did really. I thought it's quite funny. Big bastard basic shapes. All you gotta do is remember the big bastard basic shapes. What else have we got here? Oh, th this was so fun. There is so much knowledge and wisdom in this course. Because she's talking about hard and soft edges. She's really talking about, she really helps you understand how these folds work, which I think is amazing. And then she goes through perspective and she, what she does is she holds up a load of pieces of fabric and she talks about tension and compression and motion and stuff this this was her she was actually posing like that it's quite funny i enjoyed that 
This is what she said. She said, we love the rhythm of wrinkles. That was one of her little quotes. The rhythm of wrinkles. How cool is that? And then we, talk, we look at different types of fabric. Tension and compression. Yeah, I, I keep repeating it, but you really do... You do really understand why these folds are doing what they're doing. So what's amazing is, you end up being able to... Let's say you saw the human body and it didn't have any clothes on it, you can, what you can do is you can start working out. You'll be able to start working out, because of the tension points, you'll be able to start working out what the folds would do. So you can, you can, you'll be able to start, you're going to start knowing how to put fabric onto things that hasn't got fabric on it. But also, if you see the fabric but you can't see the body, again, because you know how the folds are working, you can sort of work out what the body's doing. It's really cool. So you're, you, you learn so much, you're learning so much. Awareness of edges, awareness. Everything is about awareness, I think. And then we moved into the homework. She's talking about, she's, another thing I struggle with is drawing lightly. I tend to go too dark too soon. Keep it simple, stupid. That was a little quote from Will Terry, also from SVS Learn. Here we go, look, general to Pacific. This is cool. Then we move into the different types of folds. Pipe folds, zigzag folds, spiral folds, half lock folds, diaper folds and combination folds. And she basically talks about all these folds and how they behave and why they do what they do which is very cool. She then looks at t loads of different types of fabric and gives you some general rules about how they behave, how the wrinkles behave. Yeah, fabric has rules. That's amazing because it means if you can learn the rules, you can start making things up, which is good. Thickness, we move into the thickness. Then she starts looking at textures, different types of texture. That was really interesting actually. You, you learn a lot of little tips. There's loads of tips in this, this course. And then what she does is she does a little step-by-step -step breakdown. So the first one, she's doing tight clothing. She works through from start to finish the process of drawing tight clothing on her character which is really good, and then you have to do it yourself. And then she does the same with loose clothing. And then next one, action and indicating action and attitude. Again, she goes through loads of different poses and shows you how the folds are behaving, which is really cool. And then, what else have we got at the end? Just, well, she, this one was called gesture drawings. But I would call it more sort of sketches or something, quick sketches. But what you're doing was you're just looking at little poses and doing little quick drawings of the folds. Yeah, that was cool. And that was basically it. So the types of things you'll be drawing is you'll be drawing wrinkles but only the lines. Only focusing on the lines. And then you do it with ink. Well, I, I practiced it with ink. And then you do one with shading to get, try to get your soft, soft edges. The anatomy of folds. Again, you're just practicing looking at folds and trying to understand what they're doing is what you're doing at the start. And then what you have to do is just start realistically trying to draw some folds. So she had you set up a little still life I set this up on my desk of some fabric and you just had to try to draw it so I did a couple of those and then what she does is you have to draw different types of folds pipe folds, ring zigzag folds and then you've got your spiral folds half lock folds diaper folds and then combination of two or more folds. So she provides the images for these, which is good. Later on she doesn't, 
which was one of my little negative things really because I would like it if I would have liked it if you were provided the images. So we did little cloth textures, and again I had to go and get these images, which I didn't like. Didn't like that so much, but different types of textures. So we had fur, puffy jackets, and again she's taught you the rules. So like with puffy jackets, to show thickness, the edges will be. They'll have like big shapes to them, whereas th tight and thin cloth will have sh more straight edges to go with the, the form. It's really good this is, little different types of folds. I love drawing those half lock folds, they're, they're fun to draw they are, and then just more types of cloth folds. Then we had to draw tight clothing and loose clothing. So we had a little tight clothing one there, which was fun. And the loose loose clothing there, <laughs> that was also fun. Then we did our little, well they called, she called them gestures. I think they're more little, just quick drawings really. All you had to do was capture the, the pose but more capture, as she says, the rhythm of the wrinkles. And the more you do this, the more you understand them. But what's fun is, the wrinkles are following the, the pose, which is amazing. And I almost started seeing like the wrinkles as almost like arrows going through the figure, which is it's very weird. What, what you realise is all the, all the folds, they're linked together. It's almost like, yeah, like one continuous, it's, it's weird, it's, there's a very, it is a nice rhythm to fold. That, I really enjoy doing this. That was probably my funniest exercise, I think. And she recommends doing this like every day, just learn, learning little folds. And then the last thing we had to do was take one of those images and turn it into a more finished drawing which was really fun and then the final exercise, I haven't done that yet because I've, I've only just finished a course yesterday I'll be doing that today and all you've got to do is pick a an item of clothing with lots of motion and different types of folds and do another little drawing so that's really, that's really that's what the course is about. I I love this course. I really do love this course. But like I said, I do wish it had more stylization, like more character stuff. I almost feel like this is part one of a two-part course. This part one is all about studying folds, understanding how they work, and starting to sort of turn them into basic shapes or big bastard shapes <laughs> and sort of capturing them but like I said one of the things is for instance when she's doing her drawings like here she, she says you don't have you don't have to draw all of the folds so but she never she never really explained why she picks the folds that she picks and somebody like me I would like to know like why are you picking that fold what is it about, say, this fold that you picked over the one next to it? Because if I know that, I could start... I think that would help me a lot. And something else I'd really have liked is when we did the like the spiral folds and stuff, what I would like is if you could, say, have like more focus on each fold. So what I would like is, say, she took a real a photo of a fold like doing that and then she focused on just one fold or one wrinkle and next to it she like drew it in different types of styles but also like she took that and I'd like it if she sort of said right 
here's a, bun a, different bun a bunch of different ways to turn this realistic reference image into a stylized look. So in other words, she could say, she could say, I'm going to pick this fold because this one's, for instance, the biggest one or something, and then this one and this one. But then she said, I'd like it if they said, but let's try it again. But instead, we'll pick this one, this one, and this one, just to see different things. I guess I could do that myself. But it would have been nice if she did it because she she knows what she's doing more. So she would be able to sort of say, you don't want to do this. You do want to do this. But then she also says. Again, like the rules, the, the rules are rules, but once you understand the rules, you can break them. So it's really, I guess it is up to you which folds you pick, I suppose. <clears throat> yeah, maybe that is it, but I don't know. It just felt like there was a, a little bit of structure that I would, I would have liked. It's quite hard to explain. Like Jake Parker, for instance, he leaves nothing unturned. He leaves no stone unturned on his courses. And he, he really breaks down everything, like, really minute and simple. Whereas this one, it it covered, like I said, it covered, say, the spiral folds, but it, I would have liked it a little bit more... I, I guess I would like more examples with Sean actually drawing them. That would have been good, I think. What else have we got in here? Any more negative things? I said not not enough about styling, stylization. Less is more. But why did you do the folds? I said that. You had to find out your own reference. Again, like on Jake Parker's courses, if he has you drawing something, he provides the thing to draw. Because what I find is if I have to go off and find the things to draw. I don't know, I, it, it bothers me that, because I like to have everything set up, so when it's time to study, I can just sit down and crack on. <laughs> but if I've got to go off and find reference images, it feels a bit like it, it breaks my flow. And so you don't know what you don't know that you're going to need reference images until you're working through the that module, and she'll say, go and do this and find some reference images. So that was that. I said I would have liked more breakdown of each fold. This is a real zigzag. Yeah, I've said that. So I've took a load of little notes as I was going through. Is there anything here that's of interest? I, I do want to say that this course is amazing and I definitely recommend it. And that's basically it really. I said, she's asked, she says, ask yourself, what is dark on light? What is light on dark? Fabric has rules. I keep repeating that because it's it's very important, I think, to know that. Yeah, because I always thought it was random. Rules were like f r wrinkles were random, but it's it's massively good that it has rules because that means you can learn it, which is going to be amazing. Study over artists. What else have we got? She demos with pencils. Oh, I've got a little art tip here. If you're studying in Windows 10, you can actually hide that little clock. Because I, I found that started to distract me. <laughs> so, a little art tip is hide the desktop clock. She, she, yeah. What she does is she talks about it, she demos it, and then you copy it. Which I like that. And then something else I've, she said about is... Yeah, this is the thing. This course is more about realistically drawing the folds. And I'm at a point where I really want to be stylizing. And I guess maybe there's a little bit of impatience there. But the, what I've noticed is, and I've noticed this so many times on different courses and books and stuff, you have to know how to draw it realistically before you can stylize it. And she said that in here as well. I've got a little paradox, which is everything is both dark and light at the same time. It just depends what goes next to it, <laughs> which I think is cool. Oh, I've got a little art tip here, which is a bit naughty. It's become a Chinaman, so squint. Which if it, that's a bit naughty, I made that up. <laughs> it's a future video, I think. Tension, like a wave of cylinders. 
That's cool. Yeah, draw realistically, understand, then stylize and break the rules. There was something in here which I made up which I thought was cool. It was a, yeah. Studying is key. When you study, so you observe, you understand, you stylize, you observe by studying. So before you do anything, you've got to study the, the thing you're going to be drawing, like the wrinkles and folds. You understand it by drawing it realistically and keep drawing it. Not even realistically, but just drawing it, even in like those little quick gesture things. So you study it, you draw it, and then you can stylize it. That's my free point. I made that up and I, I'm going to remember that. Because again, I, I, I want to go straight to stylizing before I've even really understood it or even observed it. I sometimes try to stylize things without even having looked at what I'm doing. And you can't do that until you've learnt it yourself. So, that's just that really. Anything else in here? Yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff. <laughs> loads of stuff, but... I think, oh, I'm going to end it with something funny here. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Basically, that was it. It's the How to Draw Dynamic Folds and Wrinkles with Shauna Tenney. And how are we going to end it? We're going to end it like like this. We're going to end it like this. Da, da, da. Look, little, little rabbit. Hee <laughs> hee.